Hey guys, Andrew, welcome back to the channel. Hey guys, I hope we all had a great break. Christmas, New Year, we're able to connect with friends, family, chosen family, communities. And I know some of the day centres, community centres and other disability services are still on a bit of a hiatus. And guys, let me be very clear. What I'm going to say in this video is not an attack, but it's an observation I have seen in my housing facility is the rampant gossip. So guys, as we know, culture, we all think it's your religion, how you eat, why you eat, your dress sense. It could be even the fandoms and the TV shows that you're into. But there is also a disability culture and there's a support worker culture. From what I've seen, people in the office, especially who haven't worked their way up from support worker, CLO, so client liaison officer or staff liaison officer, to rostering, have not worked their way up, have not a clue how important supporting your support workers are as well. I've seen that they're seems to be a fracture from the office culture and the support worker culture and there seems to be those who understand that this is a job and you're coming especially in housing whether that be a private rental a family home a cell house or even a group home or a psychiatric facility people forget it's a job and the people who are lower functioning who might have communication difficulties they're not deaf guys and it becomes this massive game of telephone with gossip and i have had to really script out this video because i've found that there are those who are more motivated than others and that motivation can be lacking. I understand having to, either you might have been working since 6 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. But guys, this is where you need to realise it's a job and keep up your physical fitness, your mental health, things like that. And if that working with that client or in that house is not working for you, you need to be the adult and speak up and explain why. And that remembering that gossiping in front of clients about other support workers, other clients, is actually really unethical. Guys, no kind, no nice way to put it. It is really, really unethical. Um, that's the thing, because it creates this environment of mistrust, of Am I going to say the wrong thing? Am I going to get thrown under the bus? And guys, you've got to remember in a cell house particularly, or a private rental, or a family home, home. It is that client's home. But whether you're working for an agency or a private worker, you are in that person's home. So you have to respect that person's wishes that are reasonable and necessary. So, that might be, weirdly enough, if you're able to drink that caffeine, having the cup of instant coffee, it might be sitting down and talking with the mum, planning out what you're doing on a shift. It might be in a cell house, generally run by an agency, yes, within agency rules, but explaining to the person who's coming on the next shift, no, that you didn't get X, Y, Z done because so and so needed more time, or this happened, or that happened, where clients can't hear you. Um, guys, I have sensitivities, and so I have actually recently discovered I have super sensitive hearing. I live with noise cancelling headphones, and that's the thing. 
Officers need to trust their support workers and support workers need to know that they are backed up by their head office. I've noticed that people don't want to do incident reports, especially the younger support workers that are coming through, because the culture in the past has been, if you're doing an incident report, that reflects badly on you. No. If the client has behaviours of concern, psychiatric behaviours or a mental illness and they can't help it, they need to have those incident reports because they become a part of our funding. And so if you're not doing the incident report, if you're not doing the accurate notes, if you're not observing them, say... If a person isolates themselves, is a person that can't handle a lot of noise, you need to push yourself to make a relationship with that person. Um, guys, this is the thing. By having those gossip sessions and those clicks, it's actually not conducive to people being with other people, and a client may not feel safe in their own home. They may not feel safe to speak up. And if they can't speak up, that is a fundamental breach of choice and control. Yeah, you're not going to, and from a client's perspective, you're not going to like every support worker, but respect is mandatory. And over on Reddit and Facebook in the support workers discussion groups, I have seen far too many support workers going on, guys, no nice way to say it, power trips, saying that, oh, the client wanted me to do this, this and this and this, uh, not take the client out. Guys, that put thing in your contract saying ad hoc duties by required is anything within assisting that person through activities of daily living, that's what ad hoc duties as required means. So guys, younger ones that are coming through, learn how to use a vacuum cleaner, change sheets, washing machine, how to be able to cook a simple meal, how to be able to meal plan, find some cheap or low cost activities. Get to know the person and that, if it's possible, that person's family. Because office culture and support worker culture need to change. You're not there to push us around and to tell us what to do. In some cases, there will be structured activity and you will need to redirect the client or have the client redirected you're not there to push them all around tell them what they need to do or sit on the couch on your phone playing games i have seen all three but then on the other hand i have seen incredibly well-trained support workers who are able to plan long term with the client who are able to meet them halfway so if there's a load of washing put on and they forget, the client forgets to hang it out, they'll hang it out. If the client gets as far as putting it in the machine and hanging it up and forgot to bring it in, they'll bring it in. Um, so all of those things that an adult relationship has. So you need to remember that you are in a position of power and to respect that. And the other thing is, and I know I've said this in other videos, is respect works both ways. Um, remember that if you've worked with one person with a disability, whether formally or informally, you've worked with one person. And so, guys, I know some support workers who've been in the industry long term pre-NDIS even, understand this. But some of you new guys that are coming in who are thinking this is an easy job, guys, no. No, it's not. 
it's not all unicorns and rainbows and taking them out for coffee. Um, it's a lot of encouragement, coaching, repetition, housework, cleaning. So, guys, yeah, take the five minute coffee break. But, guys, remember to not gossip in front of clients, not running support, other support workers down in front of clients, to be able to trust head office. And head office, if there's a disconnect between your support workers, why? Why? Can they, why can they not trust the head office? Why do they not feel safe going to you? So they are some questions that organisations are really, really wrestling with. One of my organisations, I know, each fortnight does a company-wide breakfast. Yes, company-wide. So their support workers, their client liaison officers, their staff liaison officers, their rostering, their support coordinators have breakfast together. And let me tell you, from what I've seen on social medias about these breakfasts, I want to be invited just for the food. So, guys, one way to do it. Uh, these support workers are celebrated at their first anniversary, their second anniversary. And guys, us as clients are encouraged to celebrate the great things that these support workers do. Um, guys, this is the thing. Office culture and gossip is so important. You guys need to be able to work as a team instead of sabotaging each other, which I have seen happen because people will have their hours cut, people will have situations have changed, and so the rostering will change. And so if you're questioning the roster, people need to be able to give you a coherent answer instead of just telling you it's the way it is. Because there's going to be a valid reason. And if you don't feel safe to push back about something as simple as rostering, if you see something unethical going on in the house, is that support worker going to feel safe about pushing back about procedures? So, guys, as I said in the beginning of this video, this is not an attack on agencies or support workers or anything. It's just something that me, from a lived perspective, see that you guys could do so much better because so many of you guys forget that cell houses particularly are your workplace and that by gossiping in front of the client, you're encouraging them to have bad behaviour. And so, guys, just think about the behaviours that we want our clients, our colleagues, our friends, our family to carry on into the new year. Do you want to be the one they're gossiping about? So, guys, again, I know it's annoying, but if you can like, share, subscribe, main goal for the channel this year is to grab, get it monetized as well. And guys, I know the vlogging video was promised, but my phone is at full that I can't actually access the files. So, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Um, guys, drop it in the comments what you think a support worker's role is. I'm interested to start the conversation around boundaries as well. See you in the next video.